Hello. Oh, sorry. That, that, that was the chair, by the way, that loud squeak. Um, oh, let me just take my watch off. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so hello. I am here on a very cold Monday afternoon. I was going to say Tuesday then. Mmm. Mmm. That's a nice coffee, that. Yum, yum. Um, yeah, so it's freezing outside. The hands are chilly. And uh, the nails are a little bit mucky. I was going to paint my nails. And then I thought, no, I'll do video first. Do this. Because I've guaranteed if I do my nails and then do this, something in there will chip my nails. It'll be sod floor. Anyways, yeah, so I've got a nice box of goodies in here. And you will see there are a couple of things that I showed you in a haul video not so long ago. And that's because I want to give you a little update. So, these two things that I bought from somewhere. I can't even remember now. It's so bad. It's probably only last week. But anyway, this... Um, turned out actually to be silver and it's quite the weight on it so I was right it is someone's like test piece for something I'm guessing they were probably trying to maybe bezel set some stones you can see that they've got a little bit of like a bronzy color wire in there that they hadn't quite melted together and then these little I mean they could possibly even be gold to be honest these little knobbly bits um, but yeah I've tested it and um, that is a big old chunk of silver and that cost me about 50 pence, so that's cool. But obviously it is unmarked. So, um, but yeah, testing a silver on quite the weight. So that's quite nice. And then the same with this one as well. Now I did find a mark on here. Very, very tiny mark there. But yeah, this as well is uh, testing a silver. So that's pretty smart. My mum was like, um, oh, polish it up. But like, no, no, I like the black detail. I'll like uh, polish up the, the edges, bring them to a shine and maybe the, the top and stuff. But I think it's really nice, like with the, the dark in there. So yeah, I thought I'd just give you a, a little reminder, update on those pieces. And now we've got a heck of a lot to go through on these. So I'm going to sort of semi whiz through i guess um a couple of little fun bits i should really well i say i should have listed these before christmas but i didn't actually get them until like maybe the week before christmas but there we are so we're a little bit too late but these are traditional solid sterling silver pudding charms so these you would put in your christmas puddings ready for people to choke and die on so that's nice but it says on the back, like what they are as well, bachelor button, coin of fortune, a thimble of blessedness. Lovely. But yeah, that's cool. I think they were from past times. I'm guessing. Um, yeah, it must have been. So still like a vintage reproduction of a vintage thing. So there we are. But they're quite cool. Um, I'm sure they'll sell at some point though, probably ready for next Christmas. Another fun thing here. Uh, some people are thinking of perhaps going on cruises. Now this is a good old QE2. And I know that she's been retired, hasn't she? All boats are female, aren't they? Yeah, so this is the QE2. So not only has she been retired, but you know, <clears throat> she's also, uh, yeah, and all that. Um, but yeah, nice vintage pin there, enamel pin. Again, I just thought that was cool. Someone will be going on a cruise this summer. And would like to maybe have a little bit of memorabilia, perhaps. That's quite nice. Um, a couple of things I got from Hitchin. I forgot to include the ring. It's in a bag next door. It's basically a ring with a rose on it. But I thought I'd show these two. This I overspent on. I spent £5.50 on a brooch, which is just silly. It's, you know, that's not a, that's not a good reseller, but... I know that I can sell it. It's Marley 1995 and I just thought it was really nice because there's someone out there who is a cat lover that also loves to read and that is going to be like a perfect birthday or Valentine's or whatever present for them, isn't it? So it is cute. It's pewter. Um, oh, I haven't tried out the pin actually. The pin needs a bit of WD-40 on it by the looks of it. So it works.
Yeah, it just needs a little bit of twisting round into place. But isn't that cute, I think. And then I got this from a car boot sale. I spent £12 on this. I mean, obviously you wish you find all the things like this for a pound, but you know, it's not always the case. But it is absolutely gorgeous. Six pointed star with, I think, I can't remember the name of that cut, like in there. It's like an infinity kind of cut, but absolutely lush, isn't it? See it pointed at the back. Really, really pretty. I haven't tested yet to see if it's amethyst, but um, I think maybe it is. Quite possibly, I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, absolutely lush and gorgeous colour purple as well. So I figure that was definitely going to be a seller. There's definitely going to be some profit on it, even from £12. Oh, the other fun bit. This bit isn't jewellery, but I just thought it was blooming weird. So... This, um, unfortunately, is not uh, sterling silver. It's silver plated. Can you guess what it is? Yes, it's for a snooker cue. Isn't that cool? I just thought it was really weird. I saw that and I was like, oh, that's a nice little box. And then what the heck? So yeah. Oh, why did I go and do that? <sighs> I have to wipe it on myself now. I'm gonna have blue fingers. Oh well. Anyways, lovely, isn't it? It's a shame it's not solid silver, because I would have been about 50 quid. But um, still, a nice unusual little thing, isn't it? Kind of cool. Little curio. This I got in Bristol on the way down to hit to the Hitchin meetup. Um, and this was a pound in a charity shop. This is amber. Um, they probably priced it up as a pound thinking that it was plastic because amber on first inspection just feels like plastic but um amber will kind of warm to your touch um it will fluoresce under uh, uh blue light um and it might have these little spangles in it as well which are probably normally water which means that this is like um it's amber resin so it is still amber but it's kind of amber that's been made you know Melted and put back together, put it that way. But yeah, it's still a really pretty item, isn't it? I love the little ring with these little tassel bits. So that's cool. And then that's the clasp there as well. So it's kind of like a hidden clasp. Very groovy. Right. We have got a lot to go through. Okay. A nice pair of earrings. I just thought I'd show these because I think the actual like fused glassness they go is from Harbour Fused Glass, handmade in Whitstable by Aileen Harris. Or Eileen Harris? Eileen Harris. But anyway, what lovely, lovely colours in there. Look like little galaxies, don't they? Really nice. Yeah, I just thought I'd show them because I thought they were really nice. And you never know, could you imagine if she was watching and she goes, Oh my God, that's mine. That would be really cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, why is this in here? I don't remember. It's got some hair attached to it. I think I just wanted to show something a bit sparkly. Is it silver? No, it's not silver. I don't know why I put this in here. I probably just like, I was like, oh, it's just because it's sparkly and it'll make a nice shape on there. I was probably thinking I'll do something all artistic on my little tray today and then I've forgotten about it. So <laughs> there we go. Anyways. It's a bit of sparkly. It's modern. It's not Art Deco, but it's kind of Art Deco in style, isn't it? I've got a bunch of little pins that all came together and they're all tremendously cute, but I will sell them separate. They're sort of, you can have as, um, them as lapel or tie pins, couldn't you? Little tacks. Um, we've got little sparkly teddy bear. I was hoping if they were like Swarovski or Atwood and Sawyer, but I don't think I've seen any... Yeah, I can't see any marks on them. And then a little tree frog. And then this one, just check again. No, oh, no names. A little butterfly. They probably are gold plated. So they're not like, you know, cheap little things. Still cute. Cute. Um, This one, this is um, a name that 
I'm sure most clothing resellers look out for, but just remember that they do jewellery as well. This is quite the chunk, isn't it? So like a mixed metals kind of look. So we've got like brass and copper and silver tone colours. And then this is the brand, which I'm sure most of you will know is All Saints. This was probably a good, say, £70 necklace when that first came out. So obviously the resale on it is still pretty decent. I would be aiming for about 25 to 30. It is a little bit battered and obviously it's an old season one, but still, it's quite the chunk. I would even say unisex as well because it's got some like quite masculine sort of features, you know, so an unusual kind of cool one. I've got some awesome earrings coming out now. Let me see if I can grab all of them or at least a few of them together right so these ones are dead pretty let me untangle them again these ones are all lovely little stones i'm not sure what the stones are they looked a little bit like labradorite on first look but actually they're a little bit darker but they're lovely and then these tiny tiny little delicate sort of brass beads and then this lovely peachy color stone there as well so I think they're probably handmade, artisan made. Gorgeous. These fun ones, very tribal-esque. Pointy, pointy. But they've got this like kind of um, sort of tribal, but also a little bit Etruscan or uh, what am I thinking? Like Afghani or something. But really unusual things. Lovely for the summertime those. And we will get one soon at some point and then these are my favorite ones that i found because they are made from circuit boards how cool Ooh, wrong way round is that heck so there'll be some someone out there will know what kind of circuit board this is and what it like would have been used for but how awesome i absolutely love those imagine like those for for a techie person absolutely fun stuff i love it i love it um i've got a couple of bits that look like they are silver but again these have been like artisan made sort of stuff so we've got some more fused glass nice pair of cufflinks with this fused glass in there see bezel set whoops um and i can't remember how they these, I don't think they're marked, but they are sterling silver, which is dead nice. These all came together in a lot as well. Like I bought a bag of stuff and these were all together in this little baggie of stuff. So I reckon this is someone's like project. This is super chunky heavy. And this is testing a silver as well. There's no marks on it, which is a real shame, but you can see inside where it's been made in two pieces and soldered together so possibly yes yeah, someone's like a test item very groovy and then so was this one so someone got some silver chain or made it look like silver chain would have been like a figaro with the longer ones there not so good on the soldering on that side but hey ho but still quite an unusual Ring again testing a sterling silver. Really good fun things. Um, this is another odd thing, but I just thought I'll show you this one. So it is by Sophie Holm and it's a like a key ring or a bad charm and it's like a lollipop stick with a joke on it. What do you call a fly without wings? A walk. <laughs> so if you get things like this in um, a job lot of stuff, again just take a look. Just Google the name, because I reckon, I don't know, six pound on that one. I haven't looked it up properly, but it's got a name on it. Someone will want it, and it's just kind of fun. Fun and silliness. Right, these, when I first saw them, I, I was like, oh, are they going to be like, you know, battery in the back and then flashing brooches or something that have broken? But no, they're called, so it's N-O-N-Y, New York, so Noni. And these are, I think, button covers. So you slip the button over the front and then you can have three really interesting buttons rather than 
your dull normal ones and you can switch a roo, switch them around, wear one, wear them all, go cray. But yeah, unusual and a brand that I've never heard before as well. So always be learning, every day's a school day, etc, etc. The best way to learn is by doing, isn't it? Find something, think it's cool, look it up. A um, couple of nice little bracelets coming out now as well. Again, these are the kind of ones that say if you've got in a job lot, you might just pass them over because they're just, you know, these little things. Um, however, this is a Stella Bartlett and she is sold in John Lewis, I think it is. Um, cutest little star with little sparklies in it. And then this one is a Stella and Dot. Again, quite a nice little like a uh, wing motif, feather motif there. Um, and in quite good condition, probably gold plated these ones. So there you go. So don't always pass by these little like knotted beaded bracelets because they might actually be something decent as well. It doesn't all have to be silver and gold folks because costume jewelry is also quite popular. <clears throat> Couple of brooches, do you wanna see some brooches? Go on then. I know you want to. I've got this little one. I think I paid a pound for him. Gold plated. Uh, silver. I think it says foreign silver or just sil on the back. Something like that. Oh no, it says 800. So it's not a sterling silver. It's a continental silver. So 800 out of a thousand parts silver. So 80%. But that's a very cute filigree butterfly with the gilding on the ends of the wings there. I'm not giving that one to my sister. She can't have it. I don't care what art project she's doing. She's not having that one. This one, a lovely carved cameo. Isn't she pretty? It's like she's got a ruff around her neck as well or something. Gorgeous hair. Nice marker seat around as well. That one, again, I think is an 800 marked just there. And you can tell that this is shell on the back there as well. But that's just lovely, isn't it? That will probably go into my Etsy account at some point in the very, very distant future. Same as this one. This is fab. This is unmarked, very heavy. I've had pretty much um, similar brooch to this, but it was round and it had like a cross on the front. But all unusual, probably Jasper in there and maybe some agate. Um, but yeah, just look at that. Couple of chips inside there, but again, not something that would matter. It is not marked, but it is probably very, very old. The pin is on the wonk. And then what used to be, say like the um, pendant thing, is probably someone maybe has tried to snip it off and someone's perhaps tried to do a very bad soldering repair with a bit of lead down there as well. So maybe at some point this had, um, come loose and they were trying to solder it back on but anyway still a very very handsome brooch I would wear it that way around I suppose because of that color of the actually that might have been a replacement you never know but yeah I'd probably wear it that way around really nice though isn't it quite the weight on that one as well and then this one um I got the other day I just picked her up because I thought she was absolutely beautiful um, I'd love to have a profile like that. She's got a really nice profile. It's a good strong nose and a good strong jaw. Lovely. And lovely hair. She's got lovely hair. She's a very pretty lady. Pretty lady. This one I wasn't so sure about. Um, hang on, I've got the matching ring as well. Agent Provocateur, because I didn't know that they actually did jewellery, to be honest. I quite like the sort of BDSM handcuffy sort of nature of this. Unfortunately, it is just missing the little kind of, um, well, just that side, the bit that would have just snapped on there. Um, you can just pull this out and then put it on your wrist, push that back in. And then the same like with the ring as well. I think they're kind of cool. There is something of like the sadistic nature about them that I quite like. Uh, it's got all its stones, it literally is just missing that little bit, which to be honest, when you're wearing it, I mean, you might even wear it that way around, isn't it? Possibly. But yeah, so just, oh no, there is a stone missing on there. Oh, bugger. Oh well. I'm still going to sell them like as they 
as they are because when I looked up Asian provocateur jewelry, it was quite expensive. So I reckon some might go, someone might go for that if it's priced at a reasonable price. A little bit more amber, but some earrings this time from here. We've got some rather long, fabulous, dangly ones. Look at that, that's pretty cool, isn't it? These were probably someone's project and they got a crimping, like bead thingy at the end on some wire and some hooks. So I reckon someone probably um, had a broken necklace and made some fab earrings out of it. And why not? Recycle, reuse, isn't it? Repurpose where you can. Fabulous, and someone will love that again. Oh no, I'll save you. I'll save you because you're fun and creepy. Get out. Get out. This, why did I include this in this? I think it's just because it was a really nice chain. Like a really nice woven, like all sorts of rings woven together. Very intricate kind of chain. And I think is this is Bronze Milo Italy. Yep. Bronze Milo Italy. That's another good name to look out for. I think sometimes they're sold on like QVC and stuff. Um, and this will be gold plated bronze, which is pretty cool. But yeah, it's just, I really like the way that this articulates and moves. It's like, like a snake. Just lovely. And yeah, that'd be nicely gold plated that. Um, some fun little bracelets. Now, I don't normally go for the whole calf kids and thing because, you know, I'm just not a fan, but I did think that these were quite cute, okay? So these are two calf kids and bracelets. Got this one, which has got um, little lucky charms on it. So a little heart and a clover and a padlock and a lucky horseshoe and some dice. I do like the padlock, I think that's cute, but yeah. Calf K on there. And then this one, all little London theme things. So there you go. Got a bus, London eye, and the crown taxi. Cute. I'm gonna have a little bit more coffee. We are 22 minutes in. That's not bad. We're over halfway. Over halfway. Can't remember which bits I'm saving for the end. Oh yeah. And that bit. Mm. Oh my God, I've got some groovy ass rings to show. I absolutely love these. Three cool rings. Are these just three of them? Yeah, and then a, another weird bit of handmade silver stuff. <coughs> so the first ring is this, it's quite a big one, very big, but I just love all the different colors of glass in there. It's not in silver, um, but I just love all of these. Baguette cut. Possibly crystals, but lovely rainbow. Absolutely love that. So you never know, it could be like a little placeholder wedding band. <laughs> and then these two rings are bonkers, right? I sold something very similar to this recently that also had three stones in it. Labradorite, probably a rose quartz and then a pearl. And this lovely textured kind of brass bezel setting absolutely lush it'll be some kind of designer that you'll get in like a nice posh shop um and probably would have been quite expensive it's a lovely labradorite that isn't it really nice and adjustable as well which is quite good and then this one is insane this one looks like it's from another planet isn't that entirely bonkers if anybody recognizes this design, like who they think it might be, because I mean, it could easily be like vintage, you know, atomic era. Oh my God, isn't that so cool? Definitely some art, some artisan thing. It is utterly bonkers. If that was in silver, like actual, like silver, silver, I would probably keep that because it would just be insane. But it is insane and I love it. And it just, it reminds me of like aliens or something. Cool ass. Love it. Right, okay, so back to the artisan 
someone made these. Some more cufflinks. That's carnelian in the front. They look like steering wheels, don't they? But yeah, these also test the sterling silver. And it's really unusual because it would have meant that someone had to have made these cufflink bits. They can made them. That's really skilled to do like that on there as well. And to make them exactly the same. So like, why aren't they signed? Because they did them really well. But yeah, they look like steering wheels. They were a lot of fun. And again, quite weighty. Very cool. Um, something that everyone should recognise. In fact, I think I think it is. I think it is one of their dangles. But this this looks like Coro Jewel Craft to me. This is very much one of their designs. It is such a shame when good glue goes bad. I should name this film that should make this video when good glue goes bad. I'll see if I can remember it. You'll read it underneath to see if I do or I don't. <laughs> but this, I think, is a Coro dangle. I know there is a Facebook group that does, like, dangle dangle identification. It's not a rude thing. Or maybe it is sometimes a rude thing. Who knows? Depends what kind of people they have in their group. But I'm pretty sure that is one of theirs. But definitely, it's one of their designs. Coro definitely has a certain style, just like Sphinx have a certain style and things like that. This again, this is where I'm, I'm a little bit annoyed at myself that I haven't yet fixed my um, thingy machine, you know, my, what's it call it, thingy machine, gem tester, because I need to test this to see if it's jade. I think it is. And if so, I'll probably sell it just as a pendant. It was possibly off an earring, I don't know. That's not silver. It has only been glued on. It'd be something that I would test an auction, but then look, that, is that painted? It's not coming off. But yeah, I need to get my gem tester fixed so I can see if that is actually jade. It probably wouldn't be um, a very expensive jade because like I said, it's um, you would treat nice jade a bit nicer than that, wouldn't you? Of course you would. Oh, I've just seen Heather's gone live. Right, I'm gonna have to, you know, finish this up pretty soon. It's okay, we've only got a few more bits and some of them are terribly gothic, which is obviously cool. Right, some nice earrings. Look at these. These are St. Justin Pewter, and these have got some, let's see, St. Justin, which is the same company as Miracle now, who do the Scottish brooches. Um. But yeah, lovely bit of moonstone in there. Lovely dangles. I should imagine probably the hooks would be um, silver plated, silver plated pewter. Come here. It's another pair of groovy earrings. I really like how these are set on these hooks. So we've got um, a little bit of like yellow quartz and some pretty little glass or ceramic stones. Um, but yeah, I just like the design of that. I think that's quite unusual. Again, these are probably some artisan things that would have cost a fortune when they were first put out for sale. There. This one I just wanted to show because um, it's another name that I've come across a couple of times and that actually, not with a plumbing tangle in it, I'll have to get mummy onto that. But there you go. C U N P L A T T Kunplat Kunplat I think it's Danish I'm not sure I can't remember now anyways just it's a lookout for that tag it's a half decent brand you'll get about 12 15 quid for a necklace like that it's just costume jewelry but again there are collectors out there for it and so someone might like that little sparkly thing what's next coming out Oh, this, yeah, I hoped it was gold, but it's not, it's rolled gold. But I just think that that is a lovely little teardrop stone on there. Gorgeous. Now, rolled gold will have, sometimes it has a tag like that and you'll go like, oh my God, it's gold, because it has a little kind of razor blade type tag with writing on it. 
but this one I think it says uh, 1 over 20 14k which means that 1 20th of it is 14 karat gold that's what that would mean pretty little thing anyway another little weird artisan silver piece that someone has made is this fab little tiger's eye pendant again set in sterling silver but it is unmarked which is a shame but a nice little pendant that I hope someone might enjoy. And now we're getting to some gothic -y bits. And then a couple of nice finds. Yes. Okay, we'll get there. We'll get there. Just a little Welsh thing. I think that's... Um, hang on. Let me close that thing down there. That's a little Welsh woman's hat, isn't it? With a wishbone thing. So I'll probably have to try and remember to list that before St. David's Day, but knowing me, I'll probably forget. Right, a couple of nice finds and then some gothic -y stuff, yeah? Okay, cool. Right, this again, when you're looking at silver necklaces, see, it's a nice little pretty design, isn't it? Good name to look out for is Kit Heath, which is always signed KH and then the year that it was made, so that's KH05, so not quite vintage yet. But nearly, probably by the time I list it, it will be vintage. Cute little circles design there. If you can get them boxed, which, you know, it's not impossible to find. I found it at a car boot sale not so long ago. Managed to sell some of that. So yes, nice find. So look out for KH. And then this is quite cool. I'm not sure, I think it is celluloid. Definitely an early plastic. But what kind of instrument is that? Obviously, you know, a very basic kind of violin, but is there too many? Or it could be a cello or a double bass. Very old, bit of a rusty pin, but it's still stiff, but it's fine. Very cute. And then this, I think is a bit of Whitby Jet. So we're getting into slightly gothic -y stuff now. I would sell it as it is, but unfortunately, if you can see on the flower there, there's a petal missing there and a petal missing there. So I was considering doing a little jet lot and like collecting some together, jet and bog oak and things like that. If you're not sure about these phrases, jet and bog oak and stuff, um, obviously you can Google, but also um, if you think you might have some, you can post some pictures in our little Facebook group. The link is in the description box underneath this video. And uh, you can ask any questions. Um, we won't always know the answer, but that's the great thing about the hive mind is someone in there might have a clue and go, oh, I think it might be this. And that's always nice, isn't it? And it's free, free to join, will be free forever. Right, do I show the really gothic -y bits? Okay, two more nice finds and then cool gothic -y bits. This, right, so HGNS, I haven't looked that up yet. But I was obviously very excited when I first saw, so first saw this. Oh, nine carat gold. Oh, metal core. Which means that it, it is, there is a lot of uh, nine carat gold in there, but I won't be able to scrap that in really. Not to my jewelers anyway. They'd have to send it off to a guy with a gun machine thing that goes boop and gives percentages and all stuff like that and palaver. But yeah, basically this is mainly metal with gold a lot of gold over the top of it, but it's quite nice because it goes like most of the way up the arm. So that's kind of cool. So there'll be someone out there either with like big wrists or someone that wants to wear a little bit of gold higher up on their arm. Again, like lovely in the summertime with a long dress and stuff. Very Grecian looking, but um, they might appreciate that. And I will look up the HGNS. S. By the time you watch this video, I probably will have done it, but you are welcome to leave your comments of who you think it is underneath this video. So yeah, that will be something that I wouldn't scrap in, that I would actually sell. These were a sweet little find, um, really, really nice quality. Something you get over in um, America quite a lot, you see them, and it says Kendra Scott. Can you see there, Kendra Scott? Really lovely quality, I kind of, I think she's sort of like the same-ish level as, say, Kate Spade is over here, like that sort of designer. So very well sought after. It will be gold-plated, 
So it's nice quality and gold plated, but because it's got the name on it as well, that's kind of the important thing, isn't it? Right, my three cool gothic -y pieces. So first one is this, this is gold, um, it's unmarked. Pin is longer than the brooch, it's probably Victorian and it is probably a Victorian morning pin. These are all pearls around the outside there and that I think is a bit of silk. I should imagine it probably would have had like a little glass dome over the top of it. Maybe it might have had like a little bit of um, hair or something, like a lock of hair um, or something very delicate in there to keep it in and maybe even the silk was off a person's bit of clothing. But that I think is absolutely lovely. It does look a little bit like a picture frame so it might end up as a very expensive picture frame in a doll's house. <laughs> Because you know me. And the next one gets even more gothic because this one is a proper memento mori thing. So, um, memen or memory of, and then I can't quite work out that JA, but this is pinchbeck brass. So it's brass made to look like gold with some kind of stone in the middle. It's like a banded agate, maybe. But yeah, I think this is a Victorian morning pin as well. These three actually came together. So they were probably owned by the same person. And probably all bought for the same reasons, maybe. And then my very last one is just something that I wouldn't mind a little bit of help with, if you know. I absolutely love it, though. It would almost be a keeper, but it gives me the creeps. Because it's a spider with a skull. I think it's very cool, but I don't think I could wear it because it would give me the freaking creeps. <laughs> I'm really not a fan of spiders, but I do think this is absolutely fab. So he's got a skull on his back there and then he is signed with an M, I think. Can you see on his tummy there? Not quite sure. It's like a, an uppercase cursive um calli calligraphic is that a word it is now um yeah um i'm not sure if it's for made well but it is made well i think it's absolutely fab but i couldn't wear it, it gives me the creeps so there you go that's everything that I've got. I should have done this video a couple of weeks ago, but you know, lots of things have been going on and stuff like Christmas and Hitchin and things like that. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed 37 minutes of it. Again, um, if there's anything you hear you fancy, I don't think there's anything particularly I'm keeping, is there? I don't think so, I'm not sure. No, I don't think so. But if there's anything here you fancy um, for yourself or for a present for someone else, please do message me. My email address is in the description box underneath this video. Um, and also you are more than welcome to join the Facebook group as well. And uh, come and join us and, and, you know, just chat about weird sparkly stuff. Hooray. Okay, so until next time, bye-bye now. Bye-bye.